I got to hit a button. Good morning, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started with our Sunday school lesson for today. Amen. Our lesson is entitled, A Display of Divine Glory. Our scripture for the day is the gospel as recorded by John, John the Apostle. Chapter number 11, verses 33 through 44. It's been also suggested in our preparation that we would consider the Gospel of John, chapter number 17, verses 1 through 5. Also, the Gospel is according by Matthew, chapter number 11, verses uh, 25 through 30. Our lesson takes place, <clears throat> excuse me, about a time of 30 AD. At places in Bethany. Our golden text for today says, Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. What I want to do now is we want to read through our lesson responsibly. I'm for those of us have our Sunday school books, we're in lesson number 13. The day is on February the 28th. And I'm going to read a lot of portions. I have to read the dark portion out loud and also together. And you're reading straight from the scriptures. Amen. We're starting in John chapter number 11, verse 33, and basically alternating verses until we get to verse 44. Somebody say, Amen. 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 And we're reading. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. They said, Where were you laying him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind that caused that even that, that caused that even this man should not have died? And Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha the sister of him that was dead saith unto him, Lord. By this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. And Jesus said unto her, Say I not unto thee, that if thou wilt believe, thou shalt see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with great clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you right now, God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just want to thank you, God, for who you are. And God, thank you, God, for what you are in our lives both God individually and also God collectively. Father, we ask, oh God, as we open up these scriptures, that you will be so kind and, and so wonderful to open up our hearts and also our minds. And God, help us to get an understanding of just what you're saying unto us, the church. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you. And we all say, Amen. 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 <clears throat> Excuse me. By way of introduction today, our facts is to see how Jesus every word and action glorify God the Father as he raised Lazarus from the dead. The principle is to see that all 
of life is an opportunity to glorify God since that is its purpose. And then our application is to make every circumstance of our lives an opportunity to glorify God through worship of him, through obedience of him. Amen. And also as we look at this, as we look at this, this our, our last um, lesson in this, in this quarter, but also we've talked to you in, in length about how John did not necessarily write, pick out everything to write that Jesus had did because he said that if he had did that, there were enough, there were enough volumes, enough books in the world to contain it. So what John does, because John's thesis is to prove that or to demonstrate that Jesus is God in the flesh. So what John does, he picks out seven miracles, and also he, 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 he qualifies these seven I am statements. And so we find ourselves in the last of these statements that Jesus made, talking about that he is the resurrection. And so, what, and so today we want to look at this, we want to look at how, how his display of divine glory, and also want to see that how in our life, that is God's agenda and his purpose to display his glory within us. So without any further ado, let us dig in and see just what God is saying unto us. And so today we offer you a three-point outline. First of all, we want to look at the time of sorrow. Second, we want to look at the time of action. And third, we want to look at the time of victory. And so, so, so as we look at, as we see our scripture, we see a time of sorrow. And so I'm, I'm reminded the Bible lets us know that there's a time to weep and there's a time to, to laugh. And so, so understand that everything in God's purpose has a specific time. So we see that, we see in our scripture, there also is a time of sorrow. And even as, before we get into our lesson, let us understand that, that many times, many times, I, I said it to you before, that sometimes in our, in our experience, and I remember, um, if you allow me to get personal for just a moment, that when God called my, my father on to heaven. And so I never thought that as, as my father would transition, that it would hit me as hard as it did. Because the truth be told, and many of you know my testimony, that my daddy would never win the Father of the Year award. That my father was never always there, but that hit me so hard. If it wasn't for my wife and my son, I don't think I would have made it through it. And but, but, but the thing is, is that I should have been rejoicing because why? He did not have to suffer on this side. And so where even though we say goodbye, but it was not a final goodbye, it was a see you later. Because guess what? So if I know the Lord as my personal Savior, the Bible lets me know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so therefore, and so therefore, many times we have it backwards. How we rejoice when a child is born, but when a child is born into this world, now that child has to deal with sin, the child has to deal with evilness. But when we transition unto heaven, guess what? We don't have to deal with that any longer because why? To be absent from the body is also to be present with the Lord. But, but we understand that all, but even though all that happens, and we understand what the Bible says and what God is doing in our life, but also when somebody is taken from us, and, and, and so therefore there is a part of us that is sorrow because while wow, we're going to miss them, we don't have them. And so, so, so but, but, but understand there's a time to be sorrow, but also there's a time to rejoice. And so first of all, let's look at, let's look at from our text today, how we see that Jesus is, is troubled, that Jesus is troubled. And we see that in verse 33 and also in 34. And it says that when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews weeping, which came with her, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled. And then, and then where, and said, where have ye laid him? And they said unto him, come and see. And so what, watch this now. So Jesus saw them weeping. And so understand that, that, that when we talk about weeping, and so many times, even when we're going to get to it in a moment, how Jesus wept. But not talking about a simple tear fell, but this is talking about an outward anguish, an outward bitterly cry out loud. And, and so, so, so we see that as, as Mary came and how Jesus was troubled because they were weeping. And so the Bible says, well, he groaned. 
meaning that he was deeply moved and also that he was troubled, that he was stirred up. And so watch this now. And so and so I used to I used to work, work, work with a guy, and so he took pride in in, in aggravating people. He took pride in, in messing with people. So 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 but, but but this is the term that we get from troubled is to be agitated. And so some of you know that, 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 that whether you have a washer in your home, whether it's a, a top load or, 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 or a side load, that there's a thing in it called an agitator. And so what an agitator does, it kind of moves around the clothes. It kind of makes the clothes uncomfortable so that they can get clean. And so, so if the truth be told, I think we all have some agitators in our lives. Kind of get it. We all have those people that, that I think that my life would be just so fine if you would not come and want to agitate me. But, but, the, but, 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 the, but, but the fact of the matter is, is that Jesus was troubled, meaning that he was agitated. Why? Because he saw, because he saw the pain of sin. And the, pain, the Bible says that, that the wages of sin, what is death? And so he saw the, 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 this, this result of sin being death and therefore that he was troubled that he was agitated because because we're going to get to it in a moment guess what jesus was not necessarily weeping because Lazarus was the dead because guess what he's about to raise Lazarus from the dead but when he saw the results of sin because guess what the what bible said the wages of sin is, is is death but also it goes on to say but the gift of god is eternal life and so we see that Jesus was agitated because why? He saw them weeping. He saw them in pain. And so I don't know about you, but sometimes, you know, as I'm going through something, the Bible said that we should weep with those that weep and we should cry with those that cry. We should rejoice with those that, that, that rejoice. And so sometimes, watch me now, when it comes, especially when it comes to death, that it, when it comes to a funeral, sometimes I'm okay. But when I see somebody that I care about, when I see them not okay, that makes me not okay. Can, can I get a witness? And so, so sometimes, see, I'd be okay if I didn't see you cry. I'd be okay, <laughs> you know. But, but when I see you cry, but there's something in me that, that triggers that. And I believe this is what was happening with our, our Lord as he saw his friends, as he saw Mary, and he saw Martha, as he saw them weeping out loud and understand during that day they would have what is called a professional mourners and so and so regardless of how much your family had how much money where they were on economical structure they were they were required in the jewish economy at least to hire a flute player and somebody else to come along and to help you to weep and this is how they paid respect to the dead. And so when Jesus saw the group coming along, and so this is an indication that, 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 that Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, they were somewhat well to do because they had a whole crowd of people there to help them to weep. They had a whole crowd of people to help them to mourn. And so, but when they, when Jesus saw them coming over the hill, as it were, and so as he saw them weeping, as he saw his friends in, in turmoil, as he saw his friends in anguish, then the Bible said that he groaned, meaning that, that he was deeply moved, but also that he was stirred up. And so, 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 so sometimes, so that, that there's sometimes there's something that stirs you and me up when we see people going through some things, when we see people suffering. But but let let's move on. So next we see that Jesus was grieved. And notice, notice in verse. Um, but but, but let, let me let me back up for just a moment. Look, look at verse thirty-four. It says, "Where have ye laid him?" And they said unto him, "Lord, come." and see. Watch this now. Jesus is saying, show me the place where you stop believing. He said, where have you laid him? And so many times, so, so that, so where they buried him, where, where they believed that Jesus was not going to come and resurrect him from the dead, where they believed that this situation was beyond repair. Jesus said, show me that place. And many times, see, God wants to take you and me back to that place where we stop believing in him. I, I, I understand that, 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 we're, that we're in the church. I understand that, that, that you're listening to me on Zoom and Facebook. I understand that, that you're being spiritual right now. But if the truth be told, wherever Reverend Meester wrote, all of us have been at those points where we stop believing God. All of us have 
been to those points where maybe on the outside, I still got the right clothes on. Maybe on the outside, I'm still coming to church. I'm still ushered. I'm still in the choir. I'm, I'm still mounting the pulpit. But many times on the inside, even though I'm going through the outward motions, I stop believing that God is going to do because many times we, we, we're like the man that said, Lord, I believe, but help me in my unbelief. Meaning, guess what, God, I believe that you can do it. But God, I don't necessarily have confidence that you'll do it for me. And so, and so that's what Jesus is saying. Take me to the place where you buried him because, well, wow, that's where we need to go because I need to pick you up with a place where you stop believing in me, where you stop believing that I can do miracles, where you stop believing that, that God is so high that I can't get over him. He's so wide that I can't get around him. He's so low that I can't get... You get under him, show me that place. And then verse 35, it said, and, and Jesus wept. Let me pause right there. And so again, again, this is not just talking about a tear falling. This is, this is, this is talking about this is an outward, bitterly cry of weeping. Like, God, but why? The question on the floor is that why did Jesus weep? He, and as I said before, he wasn't necessarily weeping because Lazarus was dead. But he was weeping because he saw Martha, because he saw Mary, because he saw the crowd. And so because he had compassion on them, then he became, he began to weep. Because there's something that is contagious about when you and I see somebody weeping. When you and I see somebody in pain, there's something in us that just wants to identify with that, just wants to comfort them, that wants to... So, so I, I told you before that when I go through things, see, it, it, as long as I know that I'm not the only one to go through it, then I can make it through whatever it is that I'm going through. But, but, but when I feel that nobody there can understand me, that nobody there is going through what I go through, but the Bible said that Jesus weep. And then verse 36 says, And then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And verse 37 says, And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused even this man should not have died. And so, so we see that Jesus is weeping. And so watch me now. And so many times, many times, see when people see us weeping, my, my, my father-in-law taught me this lesson a long time ago. He, he told me that yes, because you see a man weeping does not mean a man crying does not mean that's weakness. And so here we see Jesus is weeping, but there's no way we can say that he's weak. And so, and so many times, so many times we had this whole thing about how, how a man not supposed to cry, but how we see our Lord and say we see how him, him crying, how he's showing his emotions. And why? Because he's identifying with what people are going through. You see, me and you should not be so hard. It shouldn't be me so callous where I cannot get down where you are and start the week. Can I get a witness? I'm reminded, I'm reminded of, of Job and, 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 and his three friends. I'm reminded how they, the Bible said they showed up and how, how for seven days they sat there with Job in the ashes. For seven days they were good friends. For seven days, they identified with him. But after seven days, the Bible declared they opened their mouth and they began to, 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 to ostracize him. They began to diagnose and to criticize him. See, it's nothing worse than somebody want to stoop down the way you are and they start to diagnose what's wrong with you. And so I don't necessarily need you to diagnose what's wrong with me. Sometimes I just need you to sit by and, 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 and help me to weep. Sometimes I just need you to sit by and maybe just to grab my hand or maybe to pat me on the, on the head and just to let me know that I'm not the only one that's going through this. Oh, somebody ought to say amen right there. And so, so we see we see how Jesus was groaning, but, he, but in his groaning and his weeping that he was identifying 
with the people. He was identifying with Mary and Martha. He was identifying with the crowd. And so even so, so, so he's not so, see many times, watch me now, can we talk? Sometimes we get so super spiritual where we get the, the idea or the impression that nothing really affects us. And so, and so, and, and many times, so many times, but, 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 see, if I always explain the attitude that I always have everything together, that I always have all my T's crossed and my I's dotted, that I always have on the right clothes or the right thing, being in the right place, and all this stuff, I present that to you, then because you're going through what you're going through, then you think I can't identify what you're going through. And many times, right now, God has put us together so that we can help each other over those humps in life. And so, so sometimes, right now, sometimes, see, life just happens. And it's not because there's sin going on. It's not because there's disobedience going on. But sometimes, watch me now, that life just happens. And when those moments, whether I sinned or not, if it just, life just happens, sometimes I just need somebody to weep with me. Sometimes I just need somebody to grow with me, but I, I need somebody to be real and let, let me know that they're not to have all the answers together. I, sometimes I talk to y'all, I talk to my children about how in this life, we need three types of friends. We need a Paul, that father, or that mother figure. We need a Barnabas, that, 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 that brother, that sister, that, that's right there on our level. And what I love about my Barnabas is, is that they don't necessarily have all the answers, but guess what? They'll pray with me. Guess what? They'll walk with me. And guess what? They'll help me to get through. And we'll find out how to do this thing together. And many times, and many times, see, I don't know about you, but the older I get, the less I have a father figures. And so now, guess what? I have to rely on my Barnabas more because guess what? I don't have all the answers. And guess what? They're not here for me to go through. But, 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 uh, uh, but if I begin to understand, if I begin to but weep, if I begin to be, to show you that I am truly a person, that I do go, I have ups and my, and I have my downs. And so, but, but, but understand that, but when I'm up, that's when I am to pull you up. Because why? Because there's going to come time when I'm down. And I'm going to need you to help me to get up. Somebody ought to say, Amen. And so now let, let, let's move on. So we see a time of action. And so we pick it up in verse 38 and it says, And Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone laid upon it. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. And Martha the sister of him that was dead said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead for days. He had been dead for days. And so first of all, I, 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 I think I pick up, and so, so Martha must have been a sister girl. I think I picked up a little attitude there. <laughs> I think I, I think she said he's been dead four days. So you mean I called you four days ago? <laughs> I called you. I guess I, I see some sarcasm there. I see some, I see some sarcasm there. And but 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 but, but that, that that's beautiful. As my as one of my Bible teachers would say when I was in Bible school, he said that's dynamite. Why? Because that lets me know that I can come to God with my attitude and he won't strike me down. That lets me know that I can come to God and I can be real of who, as real as I can be. I can be my raw self. I don't have to fix it up. I don't have to polish it up, but I can be, I can explain my little attitude before God. And guess what? The Bible says that love covers a multitude of sin. So guess what? Because he loves me. He'll cover that up because he loves me. He'll deal with that. And, and he'll take me to the point where I can be who I need to be in him. And so but, 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 let, let's back up for just a little bit. Notice, no, no, notice the time of act, but also notice the command. Jesus said, take away the stone. Somebody missed it. See, see watch me now. Why is Jesus telling them to take away the stone when he could have just spoke into existence and the stone would be moved? So Jesus, why are you asking me, is anybody on my street, 
Why does God ask me to do things that he can do himself? Let, let, let me digress. Let me digress for a moment. And so, and so understand that, 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 that my granddaddy, my granddaddy, he had no need for a remote. He had no need for a remote. That my, <laughs> my granddaddy, that my granddaddy, that, that, that we be, he be upstairs in his room watching TV. I mean, in the house only had two TVs living room and his room <laughs> so, so he'd be up there watching tv and my granddaddy would knock on the floor he would knock on the floor and then i'd be sitting in the living room with my aunts and my uncles and and, and, and everybody be saying who's going to go see who's going to go see and so sometimes because i was the youngest i would volunteer to go upstairs and so i had to go see and he say i get, get upstairs he say turn that channel boy and so, but I'm like, you know, I dare not to verbalize it because I told you about my granddaddy that he would beat his children once a day talking about this is what you did that I didn't catch you for and I made up their mind early in life, brother man was never going to get me. And so I never verbalized that. You, why you want me to come all the way up these steps to, where you could have turned the TV yourself? Where the TV came with a remote, but you want to knock on the floor and get me to come all the way upstairs. And so sometimes that gets under our skin when somebody wants us to do something that they can do themselves. And so God, so Jesus, why are you telling them to remove the stone when all you had to do was just speak it and the stone would be moved? All you have to do is call down some angels. Don't want so, so why? Because watch me now. Watch me now. Don't miss it. Because while they had to participate in their miracle. And so many times God is telling you and me to do something that he could have did himself. But guess what? But I have to participate in my miracles. And many times God wants us to be actively involved in the thing that he's doing in our life. Yes, he could have spoken. But guess what? But he just spoke it. I would have never appreciate all that he went through to get that. So many times, so many times, so, so God is telling you and me but it, to, to remove the stone or to do something that he can do. But, 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 many, but, but, but he wants me to do it. He wants you to do it. Why? Because guess what? I have to participate in my miracle. See, see here, here, here's the thing. See, many of us, we have prayed about a thing. We have fasted a thing. We have came to church. We, have, we, we, we come to the past. We got canceled. We got all that. We talk to our brothers and our sisters in Christ all about this, but, but it has not happened. Why? Maybe because I have not obeyed the commandment to remove the stone. And so, but until I do what God says, because why? Because I have to participate in my miracles. I have, maybe the thing that I've been praying about. But God needs me to do my part so, so that he can do the rest. And so, so, but he does not need it, but he wants me to participate in the miracle. And many times, see, and I say that I'm waiting on God. But the fact of the matter, but the truth is that many times God is waiting on me to do what he said. And so, but, 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 but it's not until I do the commandment. And, and again, what frustrates me, what frustrates you, is that, God, why are you asking me to do this thing that you could do yourself? Or, why, or maybe what makes it worse, why do you want me to do for somebody else what they can do for themselves? I was, I was listening to, I was listening to the, 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 a while back at one of the speeches, of, this is Black History Month, and one of the speeches of Dr. King. He was talking about how people came to ancestors talking about they, they need to pick themselves up by their bootstraps. And Dr. King said, how can I pick myself up by my bootstraps if I have no boots? And so many times, so many times, so you and I had to begin of the spirit of lifting one another up, even of doing for others what we feel they could do for themselves but guess what? God, he wants me to participate in this miracle so that I can get to the next level, so I can get to the next thing. And, and, and I really want somebody to hear me that many times my prayers are not being answered. I'm not seeing them being fulfilled because why? I have not obeyed the command that he has given me, especially, especially when it does not make sense, especially when God, this is something you can do for yourself, or this is something they can do for themselves, 
But guess what? It's not about them. It's about me obeying God. It's about me doing what God wants me to do. And guess what? See, 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 see. I, I, I think that my, my, my children may be listening. My children will both, they will accuse me of favoring the other one. And so both of them, they hear, they would tell you, they would swear you up and down that the other one was their father's favorite. And so, but what I did many times when I was dealing with one, I would not make a big deal with the other. So they never saw how the other one many times got chastised. And so I said that to say to you, guess what? See, 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 God is saying, you do what I tell you to do and let me work it out with them. Even if I'm telling you to do something that they can do for themselves, but guess what? This is about me and you. This is about my, your obedience to my command to what I've told you to do. And remember this about God's command, that God never commands you and me to do anything that he has first not already equipped us to do. And so, so, so the question is, is Jesus commanding you? And so, and so, so, so let's move on. And so, so that, 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 next we see that Jesus reminder, that Jesus reminded, we see that in verse 40 and 41, and Jesus said unto her, say I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone where, where, where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And so, so Jesus has been reminded us that it's not, and so it's not what I do, but do I believe in while I'm doing it? See, see, Jesus said to him, notice no, no, in verse 40, so Jesus said unto her, Say not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldst see the glory of God. Then he goes and say, as they took, then they took away the stone. So many times, watch me now, many times I am doing the necessary things from the outside, but many times on the inside, I have stopped believing. And so Jesus unto her said, if thou believe, thou would see. So it's not just that I do the right thing. It's not just that I do the so-called God thing, but many times see, I'm doing the so-called God thing, but do I really believe? It, 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 many times I don't see the, 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 the results of it. I don't see what God wants me to see. I don't get to where I'm trying to arrive at. Because why? Because I've stopped believing. So Jesus said, didn't I say to you, if thou wouldest believe, then thou would see the glory of God. And so many times, so it's not just that I do the right thing. It's not just that I do the right or the church thing. But, it's, but, but do I believe in why I'm doing it? So do, do, do I believe that, that God is really going to show up? Do I believe I'm just slim enough, I'm just faithful enough to do what God has said, especially when it does not make sense? So remember this. See, sometimes see, I have to get to the point that I can trust God's heart even when I can't see his hand. And so sometimes I stop believing, but guess what? But as you look at me on the outside, I'm still looked at, I'm, I'm sanctified to I'm, I'm sanctified to the bone. And so it looks look like, like, like I'm saved to the bone and I'm, I'm sanctified to the marrow. And so, so, so but, but how, but, 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 but many times, um, it looks to me on the outside that I have the whole appearance that I believe, but on the inside, I stop believing. But, but, but it's when I stop believing that I stop seeing what God wants me to see. And so, so how many times, so, 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 so it's not just about what I do, but I have to have some faith in the things that I do. See, watch me now, watch me now. See, 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 I have been, 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 been preaching since 91. So I, I can do this stuff in my sleep. I can, I can do this stuff, so I can do this, so I can do it. You know, if it wasn't for God, I can pull stuff out. I can fool you and think that I heard from God. <laughs> and, and so, but guess what? But, but there's no benefit from me. I receive no benefit from it if I stop believing that this is what God said. 
and this is why I say and this is why it has to be a fresh word from God. And, and how do you know it's a fresh word from God? Guess what? When it hits you, guess where you live. When it when it hits you, guess on your street. That's how you know it's just a fresh word from God. Because if the truth be told, you know one of the professional secrets of uh, uh, preachers is, 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 is that, that, that we have a file of old sermons. But 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 and so sometimes they would say you know sometimes they come out this is a warmed over sermon. I mean they pull it out of the file and they'll dust it off and then they'll they're warming over. They they give, they give you some leftovers. And so and so but guess what? But but if it's really not from God, it may be some leftovers. It, we may say that we had a good time, but it really does not hit me on the street that where I'm living at. So it really does not benefit me from me. So that's why we don't want. No leftovers, but I, I want some. I want, as Granddaddy would say, I want some switching in the kitchen. I need somebody to prepare a meal for me, so so that that I can benefit from it. And so, so, but but Jesus reminder, and so, and many times you and I need to be reminded. It's not just what I do, but it's do I believe it as I'm doing it. And so because if I don't believe as I'm doing it, it just become a show. It just become an outward show. It just because that's something that I present to you trying to fool you. But if you really believe it, then we're going to really see the glory of God in our life, in our situation. And now let us move on to time for victory. We see Jesus' prayer. We see Jesus' prayer in verse 41. And so, we start, and so then they took away the stone from the place where they laid him. Here it is. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou has heard me. And I know that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it that they may believe that thou has sent me. Notice, no, no, notice two things. Notice two things. First of all, Jesus' prayer, he did not ask but he thanked. And so many times, see, in our prayer, we just have our petitions. I just have what I want God to do. I just have God, how I need you to show up. I need you to fix this. I need you to do this over here. But we never get around to thanking him for who he is. We never get around to thanking him for what he's already done. See, sometimes, see, I don't know about you, but every now and then, I like for somebody to say thank you. And so, but, but, but how could it be that many times we never get around to thanking God? Because why? As soon as God does the one thing, that we already have another list for him to do the next thing. But note that Jesus thanked God that he already heard him. Thank God that he always hears him. Uh, so number two, notice that he prayed not for himself, but he prayed for the benefit of the people. See, 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 you and I need to get to the point where, where I'm not just praying for myself. It's not just about me, myself, and I, but how I truly want to benefit somebody else. How I truly want so so Jesus says it, but he said, because I want I want them to believe that thou hast sent me so that they would know that I am the Messiah, so that they know that I am the sent one, so that they would know that I, I am sent. So therefore, what I say, they know it comes straight from God. And so, so, so I, I talk to you sometimes often about how God, what he does in his word, he's authenticating. The, 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 the messenger, so the message would be authenticated, so the message would be believed. And so many times, that's why God allows you and me to go through things, so, so now I can see that I can trust him. So now, so, so and that's why he lets me see that even as I test what the messenger is saying, so once I test it, the Bible says once I prove it, and I know what they're saying are true, I know what they're saying are from God, so now the message can be authenticated, so now I can apply that unto my life. I can apply that unto my life. And so now let, let, let's move on. And so our final point is Jesus' call. Jesus' call. In verse 43, starting out, verse 43 and 44, and it says, And when he had thus spoke, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him 
go. So let, let me summarize here. First, we see that Jesus, in our text today, Jesus comforted the sisters. He came and comforted his sister. Secondly, he expressed confidence to the people. And thirdly, he used the voice of authority to Lazarus. And so, 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 no, so, so they opened up the, they opened up the grave. They removed the stone. And Jesus here, he's speaking to Lazarus now. He's not speaking to the crowd, but he's speaking to Lazarus. He said, Lazarus, come forth. I know it's been said, and I agree with it, that, that Jesus had to say, Lazarus, come forth. Why? Because he would have just said, come forth, that everybody in that grave would have got up and came forth. And so, but he said, Lazarus, come forth. So, 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 no, so, but, but as Lazarus came forth, and so we remember in that time, and so we see this from, 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 from the, the Egyptian moves, how they were wrapped in, the, in cloth. So how we get the whole thing of mom, they were wrapping in cloth. And so when they would take a, a specific piece and they would wrap it around the face. Now also we see this in Jesus' resurrection when he was in the tomb. And so but, 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 but how Lazarus came forth. And so, so we don't know if he was hopping. We don't know how if they, they wrapped the feet together. But as he came forth, but notice now, Jesus switched from speaking to Lazarus to the people. He said to loose him and let him go. Watch this now. So, so, so as Lazarus came forth, he was so still bound in grave clothes. He was still bound in death. So many, so many times you and I come across people that are bound. But what God is saying to you and what God is saying to me, he's saying we need to learn how to loose people. For one, I need to loose them from the thing that they have done in the past. Because what the Bible said that if I really love you, the Bible said that love what covers a multitude of sin. See, guess what? I'm not really loving you if I want to display all the things you don't do well. Can I get a witness? And so, but many times, see, see, you and I have to be in the business of loosening people. So if people come to us, so we have to be in the business of loosening them. But also, guess what? I have to let you go. Meaning that, that I, I cannot no longer be bound you from this thing. Guess what? This is not necessarily a message of, of forgiveness, but, but many times, see, the read that, that because I don't want to release you, because I don't want to forgive you, so I want to hold my foot on your neck. Why? Because I want you to pay for what you have done to me. I want you to pay for all the heartache. I want you to pay for all the knives on my back. I want you to pay for all the archives and the criticism. But guess what? The more I I have my foot on your neck. The, the more I'm bound by that. So guess what? By me not loosing you, guess what? I'm not loose. Guess what? I'm so bound to you. See, see, just like, guess what? I, I told you how about my, my granddad, the one that I'm named after you, he, 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 he used to be a prison guard. And but when he was a prison, but when he got in the prison, he was also in the prison. And many times, because I don't want to loose you, I place myself in the jail that I want to keep you in. And so therefore, now I'm not, uh, so you're not free, and I'm not free, but Jesus said, loose him. Meaning, take those, those grave clothes, take off the past, take off the things that he has done, and guess what? And let him go. Let him to be free of who he is. And guess what? The Bible says, I'm not the Bible, but I've heard this, that, that if I truly love you, I have to learn to let you go. So, but if I let you go, if I let the bird go and it comes back to me, then it was truly mine. And so many times, but many times, see, I'm too much trying to hold on to things. Why? Because it's a tenacity in us that I want to control things. But guess what? A controlling person is not a, is, is, is not a believing person. So therefore, but if I so much want to control you, but, 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 but Jesus said to loose him. And then to let him go. And this is what you and I should be doing for one another. Because if the truth be told, we all have some grave clothes on. We all have some things that I need to be loosened. Because God sees he's not talking to Lazarus. He's talking to the crowd. Because guess what? Lazarus cannot loose himself. He needs somebody to come in and to loose him. And also to let him go that he can be all that God wants him to be. It's not in our text, but, 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 if, but if I had time, I would, I, would, I would turn you over to the next chapter and we see Lazarus, a free man, sitting at the dinner table with Jesus and all of the apostles. And so why? Because the crowd loosed him. 
And understand this, understand this, I say it all the time, that the reason that I'm standing before you today is that somebody prayed for me and that somebody lifted me up and that somebody forgave me, that somebody covered me. And this is the business that you and I should be in about loosing one another and also letting one, one another go. Because Jesus had done his part. He had resurrected. He had, he had resurrected out into a new life with him. But now it's up to us to loose one another and to let one another go. Amen. My time is up. I want to thank you for yours. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you right now, God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God, for this lesson. God, we thank you, God, how you display your divine glory, God, in this chapter. But Father God, we just believe, oh God, that you're displaying <clears throat> your divine glory in our lives. Not just the lives of collectively, but also our lives of individually. And so, Father God, help us to be in a business of loosening one another and also letting one another go. God, help us to be in a business of not necessarily wanting to see one another pay for the things that they have done in the past, but Father God, this is Sunday. This is the first day in a whole new week. So God, you gave us another day, you gave us another week. God, we're about to enter to a whole nother month. So Father God, help us to not necessarily be tied to the past, be tied to the grave clothes, but God, help us to loose one another and also to let one another go. And God, help me to remember that God, what I want someone to do for me, I should first do for them. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you. And we all say, amen. Again, we want to thank everybody. We're about to make our transition. Give us a few moments into our worship experience. Amen. Thank you.